feminine energy. This is what men want. So welcome to part three of the series, masculine energy, feminine energy, relationships and so forth. Now, as I did with the masculine one, I'm going to speak about feminine energy, but we're also going to speak about why men want this, right? So I don't want people just to think feminine energy, that's me, I'm a girl, this is my video and that's the end of it and not understand the other side of it, right? Whether you're a man, woman, whatever, I want you to watch both of these videos. I want you to watch all of these videos and understand not just your own energy, but the energy of your partner. Because to understand both energies means that you can learn and grow together and you can bring more harmony. You can bring more love and polarity into the relationship. Polarity we're going to get into on our next video. So stay tuned for that. Now, feminine energy. As we said with masculine energy, masculine energy is like the rock, the mountain, the stability, right? The rigidness. Feminine energy is the opposite. So feminine energy is the movement. It's the, the chaos. It's the ever-changing emotionality of situations, right? That ocean-like nature, right? Always moving, always changing, always expressing itself, right? And it's like that free-flowing nature. You can get masculine cities, you can get feminine cities, right? So, or let's say places. So, for instance, a masculine place is somewhere like New York, right? You go there and it's organized, it's structured, everyone's on a mission, everyone's getting to where they need to go and it's fast paced, it's, it's very masculine, right? And then you go somewhere like Hawaii where everyone's laid back, chill, just free flowing with the energy, right? Yeah, maybe we'll get there at nine, maybe we'll get there at 10, whatever. That's feminine energy, right? That free flowing nature. And when you have that free flowing nature, it means that as a woman, your emotional control is less. And that's not to say it's a bad thing because that's why you have the masculine, right? That can ground you in those situations. But this is why women to their own nature are emotional, right? They often have mood swings and they change often because of this feminine energy. The feminine energy doesn't stand still. It doesn't stay in one place like that, like a man. A man when in his masculine can stay in that stoic, composed, unemotional state, right? He feels the emotions, but he's in control. Whereas a woman in her feminine energy, she feels the emotions and they're powerful and they, they take her and they sweep her away, right? And that's why she, she relies on the man and the masculine to give her that sense of stability again. Right, and this is what we spoke about in the previous video. But that is first and foremost what feminine energy is. So as we said that the man and the masculine is that stillness unmoving, then the feminine energy is the moving, right? The unstillness, the the constant flow of life. This is what feminine energy is. So this is why women, for example, like spontaneous things they like to experience stuff and express themselves in many different ways it's that energy just wanting to constantly manifest itself into situations to create and to love and all of these free-flowing things right it's not there's no mission behind it there's no purpose behind it it's just flow and playfulness and love right it's that is what feminine energy is and how you can imagine it free flowing changing moving and the way this manifests in the world is it's it's loving it's it's very nurturing it's very caring and this is why women are far better than men at nurturing and caring children right this is why we said they're both important, but 
growing up in them early years, there's nothing more important than child and the mother, right? That relationship, that bond is unlike anything, right? The mother and the child, it, it's more powerful than the father and the child. It is so. And as we've said before, like there's going to be situations in this where I speak about men being better than women at certain things and women being better than men at certain things. It doesn't mean oppression, right? It doesn't mean no women can be just as good as men. And I know someone that's just as good and I myself and my partner doesn't do it. Like, it doesn't matter. We're talking generalities and in general, in the early stages, women are better at that, right? And there's going to be things that men are better at and it's fine. That's why you complement each other in a relationship, right? That's why when you have the masculine and the feminine, they harmonize together, right? It's like you have a piece of music, right? Let's say you have the drums in the background, right? A constant beat of the drums. But then on top of that, you have, I don't know, like a piano or a violin or something, right? And it doesn't mean that the violin's better than the drums or the drums are better than the violin. It's just together they make a piece of music. But what we're trying to do is sort of compete with each other and making the drums oh the drums are not as important you don't need the drums in the music you can do it all by yourself and the, and the violin needs to make beats like the drum do you know what i mean it, it's like no we can have both we can complement each other in their own ways we don't need to compete we don't need to match as i said already we want men to be the best men we want women to be the best women we don't want men to be the best women. We don't want women to be the best men. They each are completely different. Attraction is completely different. And nature, God, whoever you want to sort of point to and why this is the way, has organized it in such a way where both energies completely connect and unify together and complement each other in, in every way. And the attraction is completely asymmetrical, which is what you want, right? You don't want attraction to be the exact same you want attraction to be opposite because then when you have two opposites they attract you have two people that are the same they're not bringing anything different to a relationship so if you're blue i'm red all right we've got two different colors there. if you're both blue and you're both the exact same in everything there's less awareness there there's less consciousness there's less potential to grow right if you imagine consciousness as that expanding field of awareness, you want more available learning and resources and, and so forth at your disposal to grow in that state. And so when you have a partner that provides all the opposites, all the strengths to your weaknesses, where you provide all the strengths to their weaknesses, then all of a sudden your field of expansion, your field of what you can become together is monumental because you're all you're covering each other's weak points right and this is the beauty of the masculine and feminine is that where one lacks the other flourishes so if we go back to feminine energy as i said it's that love that nurture right that's how it manifests and as we said with the masculine, how that manifests at a young age, having that competitiveness with boys, video games, football, things like that, embodied masculine energy. We can see the same thing with women, specifically young girls, with like the toys they play with. Like, think about what it means to play with, I don't know, a dollhouse or paint or draw and things like that, right? I'm not saying that boys don't ever do that, but that expression right there's no playing with dolls there's no purpose to that there's no end goal there's no mission right like there is with boy stuff like with boy stuff climb in the tree get to the highest point get to the top playing football score the goal playing a video game complete the mission move up right it's constant progression it's constant mission there's constant objectives whereas when girls play they just play there is no mission and that's the difference when women girls play, it's just an expression of the energy, right? And because they're very nurturing in their essence, innocent and playful, it just expresses itself as 
what you see when they play with dolls or things like that, right? I know that's very stereotypical of what girls like, but that's the reason because a lot of girls like that stuff because it's embodiment of feminine energy, the playfulness, right? The creating a family, the the loving side of life. And we refer to Disney films in the previous video and we do the same again, right? The best films that women love reflect love, reflect the need to be seen, the need to be heard, right? This is what feminine energy wants. It wants connection. Its primary purpose is to find love, right? This isn't the same for men. The me for masculine energy, the primary purpose is the mission. It's not love. So that means that in a relationship, the man's primary pur purpose and his mission is not love for his woman. It's his mission, his purpose first, his work first. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds counterproductive, but that's what works, right? And to prove this to you, when all the soldiers left in World War II, World War One, right? They were all saying their goodbyes to their wives. Most of them knowing that they probably would never come home. They knew that their duty, their mission to serve the country, to go fight, fight for her, fight for the family, right? Fight for them, fight for their freedom is more important than his need and his want to stay with her. And even though she wants him to stay with him, sorry, even though she wants him to stay with her, she, she instinctively knows that it wouldn't be a, she, she doesn't actually want that, right? I, I know you'd probably say, oh, of course she does, of course she does, but she wants it on the surface, but she knows in her heart that this is what he needs to do. He needs to go and I don't want him to go, but he needs to go. It's, it's his duty, it's his mission. And she finds that attractive, right? If he stays and goes, oh, I'm not going to fight for my country like all these other guys that are leaving their families. I want to stay with you, baby. And then she's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's great. And then eventually she would lose a bit of attraction for that because that's not what a man's supposed to do, right? Same thing with the Titanic. Like, yeah, she wants him on the lifeboat with her, but she knows that all of these men behaving like men are giving their lives for the women and children, right? It's, it's what masculine energy does. It sacrifices itself. And we can go on quickly about the illusion of the patriarchy because I know that one bubbles up a lot. Patriarchy, the patriarchy. But where was the patriarchy? Where was the oppression of women when all these men went to fight in this war for them? Where was the patriarchy where the Titanic's sinking, right? And all the men staying on the boat and letting the women and children get on the boats, the lifeboats to safety while they perished, right? Where's the patriarchy then? Where's, this is the thing, it's, it's almost insulting to go on about the patriarchy and, and that it oppresses women when for all of time men have just been fodder they've literally been cannon fodder they've been fodder in all sense and rightly so right this makes sense i'm not arguing against this because a woman's life is more valuable than a man's life in the sense when it comes to reproduction when it comes to making the human race survive women are more valuable in that respect because a woman can only birth one child in nine months whereas a man one man can impopulate a whole island just by himself, right? If you have an island and you have 10 women, one man, that's all you need. Whereas if you have 10 men and one woman, she can have a baby nine months and then another one. And, another, and but maybe you're getting, I don't know, five babies, right? Maybe more. But then you're not, you don't have as, as much genetic diversity and you don't have as many. I know you're still going to have the same problem with the man, but if you had maybe five men to 10 women, like it's, you can get rid of men easily and have one man left that can impregnate 10 people in one day if you wanted to, right? I know that's an extreme, but it can happen. Whereas 
And you're not going to get that with a woman. You get one baby in nine months. So that's why you can send men to war, right? And they die. It doesn't matter because we can have less men than, than less women and it will still work. Whereas if we tip the balance and have far less women, then problems are going to start occurring. So men have always known that. Women have always known that. As I said in the beginning of this series, like a lot of this stuff we already knew, right? And we've lost this and we, we have to sort of relearn it again. But this was always known and this is why women were always protected, children were always protected because they're more valuable, right? The children of the future, the women can only produce so many children at so amount of time. And the men, they you can kill them, they, like they're disposable, right? I know it's harsh, but like I said, I'm not arguing against it. I'm speaking in all of these from reality, from truth, right? From objective, this is reality, this is what makes sense. So off of the patriarchy um, tangent that we went down, we go back to the feminine energy, right? That love, that expression, how young girls would express that energy. That is how it manifests, right? We can go further into it, but that is the basis of feminine energy. So when it meets the masculine, like I said in the other video, it is the opposite all of the time. So this is why it works. The masculine wants to be in control, the leader, dominant, taking control of the situation, et cetera, et cetera. And as I said, women want this. They want this in a man, right? This is attractive qualities. What that means, as I've alluded to, is that as a feminine woman, this is what men want, right? So, so the masculine men want feminine women, if that's with the energy that you want to live with, it means that you need to be submissive. It means that you need to follow his lead. It means you need to let him take control. And this is why men find argumentative boss babe energy women so unattractive because it's just another level of unrest, another level of peace that they can't find, right? They're, they're already taken on the world, right? I know a lot of guys don't do this and we've said already, Men need to be better, women need to be better. But if we're both fulfilling our roles to the best of our ability, the man's out there, right? He's earning a living to take care of you, to take care of the family, to provide. If an intruder breaks into the house, he's expected to go and lay his life down for you, right? He's he's doing his bit. So the last thing he needs is that argumentative nature. And it doesn't mean that he just dominates and tells you exactly what to do and you just have to listen without there's a, there's a balance to it i get but it still means that he has the final say and this is where women just cannot seem to grasp this concept as i said 50 years ago 100 years ago this would all seem normal right this is not foreign to any woman but in today's world this is something that so many women can't grasp and to prove it they they want domination and leadership and a guy that's got his shit together when it suits them, right? So when you walk down the street, you want the guy to be in control if someone was to come and hurt you or attack you, mug you or whatever, right? You, you want the guy to be in his masculine end. You don't want, you don't want it to be a 50-50 then, right? He's fully in his right to take control in that situation. You want a man to be in his masculine when it comes to paying the bills, paying for all your things you want, right? Then he can be in his masculine then. And then in all the other all the other ways, right, that benefit you. But then when it comes to, okay, if I'm in control of you and I'm responsible for your safety, then I have a degree of authority. That's how it works. So when a man imposes that authority, then all of a sudden women don't want to hear that. Oh, you, you're not in charge of me. I'm my own person, right? And yes, you are. But as we're speaking about with these dynamics in a relationship, you can't have two people in leadership positions in a relationship. There can only be one leader. The same way there's not two captains of a ship. There's not two presidents of the United States. There's not two people at the very top. 
The same thing applies in a relationship, right? In the fact that you can't have two leaders. You just don't. And you're not supposed to, because as we keep alluding to, when you have masculine energy and feminine energy in harmony together, the feminine energy is already submissive in its nature. It's innocence, it's modesty, it's docile, it's that soft energy, right? It's gentle. Whereas masculine energy is that assertiveness, leadership, dominance, powerful energy, right? So they go together, but masculine energy and masculine energy don't go together, right? That's when you just get competition. Like in two guys, that works because you're both competing with each other. You get the best out of each other, but that's not what you want in a relationship. It's not what men want and it's not what women want. But again, with this indoctrination of feminism, what is teaching women is that men somehow do want this. And if you if you are confident, if you do have your shit together, if you are outspoken and you've kind of, yeah, you've got this boss babe queen energy that men are going to find that attractive, like that experience that you get, right? Men are, find ex- are going to find experience attractive when they don't. And this goes on to my next point, which is probably the most controversial, but to me, it's once again, so obvious. And it's things like your promiscuity, your sexual nature as a woman and why it's fundamental because once again, all of this stuff reflects back biology. It reflects back basic instincts of evolution over time. So before, I don't know, the last 50 years, how would a man know that the baby you're pregnant with is his, right? There would be no way to know. The only way he would know is that he knows that you're loyal to him. You don't sleep around. You're not promiscuous. You don't have a high body count. All of these things are green flags for men, right? Because now they have assurance that, okay, you're pregnant. This baby is mine, right? It's that simple. And men instinctively understand this. This is why men do care about body count. This is why men do care about your past and so forth. And as I said, a lot of people won't like to hear this stuff, but I'm just telling you the truth of the matter. It doesn't mean that it's going to sort of hinder your chances. It's just there's re- there's a fact of the matter and there's a reality, right, that guys want things this way. Um, it's not every single guy, but it's the vast majority of them. And the ones that are okay with it are likely going to be the simps that will just be okay with everything. And as we already mentioned, those are the guys that, yeah, they'll say yes to everything you want, but eventually you lose respect for them. Eventually your hypergamous nature kicks in and you want a guy that's going to put you in your place a bit, lead you a bit. And it's not this guy because he's following you, right? So it pushes you into your masculine and then you lose that femininity and then you kind of come away from your purpose as a woman, which is what we'll get into in a minute. And the whole thing falls apart, right? So sometimes you just need to hear the straight facts of the matter and that is it. Like men do care about your past. Men do care about promiscuity or how many people you've been with, et cetera, because it's built into men. It's built into us, right? So that is why that topic just, it's very controversial because once again, feminism is teaching you the complete opposite. Feminism is teaching you that men want the experience. They're teaching you that be sexually free, be in your power. And I just want to say, Women are the gatekeepers of sex, right? In a relationship, in when a man's caught in a woman, wh- whatever the dynamics are, right? The woman decides when sex is going to happen. That is how it works. We know this is how it works. Like, it's logic, right? So it's all up to the woman to decide when this is going to happen. I know there could be situations that may be the opposite. The woman's ready, but the man's like, no, you're all right. But it's very rare, right? Most guys will take what they can get. Women choose what they want to get, right? So women are the gatekeepers of sex and then men are the gatekeepers of relationships. And before we get into this point, 
I will expand on that by saying that this un this can be understood with men will fundamentally have sex with far more people than they will give commitment to. So as a woman, understand this because this is important. Who you have sexual access to does not determine who you could be in a relationship with because a relationship is different for a man than having sex with a woman. Whereas for women, they won't have sex with random people as much as men will, right? It's different. And this goes into the biology again. Men are just built to spread their seed. Women are built to preserve their seed for the best mate. So this is why men just find so many women alluring and attractive and why men often cheat more often than women. I'm not saying that's right, by the way. I'm just saying this is why, because men don't have the proclivity to not so much stay with one woman because you can choose to do that and you should, which goes into the whole oxytocin of hormones and pair bond and things like that. But in their biology, it's, they're not wired that way. Whereas a woman is wired that way, which means it's easier for a woman to stay with one person because she doesn't want anyone else, right? She vets the best man, picks the best man. So why would she want anyone else unless the, a better man comes along? But most of the time she's happy with that man. Whereas men, they look for the best woman, but it's more of an attractive value, right? It's more of just their beauty and things like that. So that beauty is always on display for them in every single girl that walks past, which is why men often cheat more often than women do because of that energetic biological impulse that they have. Anyways, if we go back to the body count stuff, why it matters. Women know this, right? And this is why an insult from a woman to another woman is to call them a slut, call them a slag or whatever, right? Because we all know promiscuity, sleeping around as a woman isn't a good thing. And this goes back to what I was saying, that if you have, if you're the gatekeeper of sex, right, which women are, and you choose to have sex, is there power then in giving that away all of the time? Or is your power in actually saying, no, I will decide when this happens, right? It's very obvious, isn't it? It's the second one. If you're completely in control and you give it away less, then you hold more power. If you're giving it away all the time, then there's less power in it. Yet feminism has convinced women that giving it away all the time to guys that don't necessarily deserve it is powerful, right? So now as a culture, as a society, we create men that do less, but still get rewarded in the sex from the women. Whereas before, a man would have to actually become someone of some sort of value, right? For the woman, because ultimately the reality is for men, and this is the reality, women sit on the finish line and wait for the winners, right? That women choose the best man that they want. Whereas a man has to build himself up. He has to become attractive to a woman. There's a good saying that reflects this, that Women are born with their value, but men have to earn it. And it's true because the value of a woman is primarily their beauty. Personality is obviously attractive, but that can be worked on. But it is first and foremost beauty. It is fertility, health, attractiveness, right? That's what men look for like instantly. And so most of those things will be gifted to you at birth. Whereas the stuff that women find attractive in a man, confidence, physical strength, mental strength, financial stability, ability to protect, all of these things need to be worked on. Right? You're not gifted these things. Sure, a guy can be gifted good looks, but that's not enough in today's world. So 
a guy has to work to become someone that women are attracted to, whereas women don't have to work at all to become someone that men are attracted to. Initially, as I said, when we spoke about the sexual attention and relationship attention, those are two different things and women often don't understand that. So when they get sexual attention from all these guys, they think that they're the shit and they can attract the best people for a relationship, but they can't because sexual attention and relationship attention are different. And you want to focus as a woman on retaining a guy, not just attaining him sexually, but can you retain him for the relationship? Because that's what your actual league is, right? Whereas men, who they can have sex with is going to be usually who they can retain as well. So it's almost like men get their rejection up from like you'll know straight away as a man like you go up to the a girl that's not interested out your legal ever and you'll know straight away because she's not interested whereas women can sort of get in with the wrong guy think that they're on this guy's league and then when he doesn't commit to her that's the actual rejection right it's sort of like a men get the the forehand rejection and then women get the backhand rejection after but you'll find you'll find out as a woman that yeah who you can have sex with is not who you can retain all of the time so if we get back to how this actually relates to this topic we're talking about we've always known as a society that's why it's been shamed that's why it's sort of looked down upon because degeneracy sleeping around it does nothing for you it does nothing for society as i said it makes men worse men because they don't work as hard anymore it makes women worse women because they're giving away their power and even on a hormonal hormonal level it's actually changing your oxytocin to making your pair bond hormone release all of the time all the partners you sleep with you're releasing oxytocin which is a pair bonding hormone so if you're just having one night stands all the time and you're not bonding with this person, it's like you're depleting that. So your pair bonding with a, an actual person that you want to settle down with is going to be even harder. There's even statistics on this. You can see how the more partners you have, the more likely you'll end in divorce. I think it's, I can't remember the statistics, but I think it was over like over 10 or 20 or whatever, where once you hit over that range, again, it's all going to be different, depending on the person, but the chance of divorce go up like 50%. Whereas two virgins that get married, the chances of them being in a successful marriage is about 98%. So there is something to this oxytocin pair bond and stuff. So once again, it reflects back that sleeping around has a net positive, a net negative, sorry, on yourself society, men, women, everyone. There's no benefits to it. There's actually no benefits to it whatsoever. So your power as a woman is to have the standards to pick the best man, but to understand your feminine energy, right? And as go to the next point we're going to go into is what men actually want specifically. So we, we touched on it already, but Men want that feminine energy in, in his partner, right? And that's not masculine energy. So when you understand what masculine energy is, it's not that. It's not dominance. It's not assertiveness. It's not experience. It's not leadership. It's all the opposites, right? It's the gentleness. It's the nurturing, the caring, giving him peace, supplementing his mission, right? Supplementing his life, being there for him to just be that, additional i don't know what the best word to describe it is but like a supplement and that's not a bad word to use at all in the sense of like you're just at you're like this peace this comfort right he comes home to and you're taking care of all the stuff that he's not already taken care of if you can be this to a guy then that is basically all you need right? Just don't give him grief. Don't give him the argumentative nature. Follow his lead, follow his word. And that submissive, 
submissive and that submissive and dominant dynamics that we spoke about doesn't mean that you have to submit to any guy, right? You're the one that's I'm speaking to women here, but you're the one that's vetting the guy that you want to be with. So vet the guy that you want to be with, and then likely he's going to be a masculine guy if you're a feminine woman. Then submit to that guy, right? No one's telling you to submit to any old guy. You're the one picking the relationship. You're the one picking who you have sex with, sorry. And then if that if you're actually in that guy's league and he will commit to you and then you've you've got the relationship. But ultimately you're deciding still, right? You're deciding who you want to be with. So this goes back to why you shouldn't sleep around because there's no point to it. Pick who you want to be with, get a relationship with them, and then you'll be happy to submit to that man. And as I said, you can't have two North magnets. You can't have two masculine people in this relationship. So when you do get into it, if he's in his masculine, then he is going to want that submissive nature in, his, in the feminine. And that loving, that caring, being a mother primarily is what the feminine wants. So I see some to my next point. What is the sort of mission for the feminine? And ultimately, it's being a mother. And this won't be for everyone, of course, but... You could see it as instead of being a mother, let's say the manifestation of love in either finding love, giving love, but the way and why being a mother is so important to the feminine is because there's no love more powerful than that with a mother and a child, right? So it's like we could, in the same way a masculine, right? He has a, a mission, but the ultimate mission is always going to be the most powerful thing in his life, right? You can see it that way. So if the feminine looks to find love, to, that is what the feminine wants, right? That seeking of love, seeking of connection. There's no better place you'll find it than having children, having a family, because that is the embodiment of that love to such a degree, which is why often for women, that is where they find their most happiness. So we go back to the first episode where I said that we're teaching women to chase careers and to sort of put that on hold, put a family. Yeah. If you want a family, wait, wait, sort your career out first, blah, blah, blah. And obviously you can do that, but so many women kind of leave it too late and then they're sort of pressured. They're in their thirties now and they're like, oh, I need, I need a family. I should have done this earlier. I wish I'd done this earlier. And it's just not gone the way society taught them once again they kind of feel cheated kind of feel like this isn't actually what you wanted this is what society made you feel like you wanted and what we're seeing now and we'll continue to see is many women that sort of backpedal that decision and and want to get into having a family again earlier on because the age of marriages are increasing the ages of like first births are always increasing as we've mentioned already the amount of babies being born is decreasing population is dropping so this has ramifications this whole ideology this where it's going this women trying to compete with men women trying to be the breadwinners as well it has a knock-on effect on so many things and it's almost impossible to cover cover every single angle of how it all interrelates, how it all interrelates to the dating apps and this issues of overabundance, this illusion of having these options, being like having this time available. There's so much to it. But yeah, we can we can see from that that there is consequences to going down that path as a woman and not having the child, not having the family earlier on. But that is primarily the deep purpose for the feminine, right? Like I said, the purpose itself is to find love, to seek love, find that connection. But you won't find it any more strongly than with a family. And that's why 
so many women find their happiness, find their fulfillment with a family. And so often there's now like an epidemic with depressed people, specifically depressed women in their forties that are single, don't have any children. They've done all right in their careers. Maybe they've earned a bit of money, but obviously like you always, you always hear, right? You're not going to find happiness in money. You're not going to find fulfillment in it. You can have fun with the form and the stuff you can buy, the player form of the world, but you're not going to find fulfillment in it. So unless you have that as a woman, then it's not going to fulfill you. Whereas a man, it, it can do, right? Because a man's primary purpose isn't love. It's it's the mission, it's the purpose. And if their mission and purpose is their career, which it often is, then he will find that fulfillment and happiness, regardless whether he has a family or not. I still think that everyone should, if they're able to. Um, but it's not going to be as prevalent as a woman. So when that career fades a bit, when the mission of the career isn't as big of a deal for a woman as it is for a man, it'll get to the point where she wants love again, wants to find love. And when she doesn't have it, then she's going to feel empty and depressed. And that's what so many women are experiencing now. And so that is it with the feminine. That is what guys are looking for, right? The masculine guys want the feminine women. The feminine women want the masculine guys. You understand that? You understand what you bring to the relationship? You understand what your partner wants? And I promise you, you will create so much more harmony. You will know your place. You'll know what your partner wants. You'll know who's supposed to take the lead in these situations. Like it means the guys step up. It means the girls step up in both in their roles, right? Like, what does my man want? What does my woman want? Honestly, like, like I said, I don't know how we don't have any idea about this stuff. It's crazy to me. In some other cultures we do. But it's not really understood in terms of energy. It's more just, this is what a woman does, this is what a man does, but not understanding that that comes out of the masculine and the feminine energy. If you're interested in learning more about feminine energy, I have a guide on my website, mountevolve.com. I'll put the link in the description. But over there, that's my self-improvement website, spirituality, transformation, all that stuff. You can have coaching from me fitness programs and so on it's all over there like i said link in the description if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe make sure you check out the next one we'll be speaking on polarity and sexual polarity in a relationship but yeah if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe thanks for watching and remember you're here to evolve